Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is uh, bringing your week to a close uh, in a positive way. I hope that you have been able to gain some ground, uh, accomplish some, some things, and move towards goals that you have set for yourself and those you love. Uh, remember what I always say, even if that is not the case, even if for some reason there is a lot going on, things aren't the way you would like them to be, uh, you're pressed, your back is against the wall. If you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Uh, with that being said, man, I'm going to move right into this. Uh, what I'm about to do is talk to you about something that I have talked about uh, for some time. Uh, like I said, the things that I talk about, whether it's about uh, uh, African-American, adolescent, young adult male violence, whether it's about intimate partner homicide, whether it's about depression and mental health, whether it's about mass incarceration, and I can go on down the line, the racial wealth gap and all of that. If you look back over time, you'll see that I've been talking about it. I've been writing about it. I've been lecturing about it. This isn't something new. I'm not riding some trend rave. I'm pushed by passion and purpose. Uh, and, I, and I've been doing this for years. My adult life and a part of my teenage life has been given to being an instrument of information, knowledge, and solutions to the enigmatic issues that plague the black community. Um, whether I'm well-received, rejected, um, assaulted, or whatever, uh, I've been consistent. and. And that's the one thing that can be said. You can say what you want to about me, but I haven't wavered. I've been consistent. My passion is true. My love for my people is proven. And I will continue to do this. And one of the things out of all the things that I mentioned that I've been talking about uh, for as long as most of you have ever seen me is the agenda on debt to feminize the black male image and to taint uh, black masculinity. And I've talked about it, I've written about it, I've given you the insight on it. Uh, I'm not one to move on feelings, I'm one to measure and to observe and to counter based on what I observe. My life has been a series of adjustments for me, for my family, for my people, and I consistently press that. What I'm about to show you is an image of Lil Nas X, Nas X or whatever his name is now, uh, are, uh, arriving at the uh, Met Gala, the annual big fashion gala in, in uh, New York City uh, by invitation only. Uh, the who's who's of the who's who's get to go and uh, the way he showed up uh, became a thing. and. My thing is, this isn't about his homosexuality. Uh, those who have followed me for any time know how I feel about uh, the impact of homosexuality on the black population, but I also know that I love my brothers and sisters regardless of their sexual orientation. Um, and so this isn't about that with me. Uh, it isn't so much about him as it is the caption on this uh, picture. And I'm gonna talk to you about that as soon as we take a quick look at it. It's in the uh, thumbnail, but I want to show it to you during the video so you can actually see it. Uh, so here, take a look at it. Okay, so um, with that being said, my issue uh, isn't, like I said, with his homosexuality because I can respect a person in their homosexual situation when they are behaving in their homosexuality the way I behave in my heterosexuality. I'm not walking around saying, man, I need a woman, I need a woman, I need a woman, uh, I'm heterosexual, I'm here. I am who I am. I'm living my life. I'm being me and who I am and in my truth. And what I am and how I move will ultimately be observed and people will understand. 
I don't have to scream it. I don't have to yell it. I don't have to put it on the poster board. I'm living my life and what I do in my bedroom is just a part of that life in entirety. Uh, my problem with this picture isn't that because what's going to happen is and we've been trained to defend assaults on uh, us from a number of different directions and this assault on black manhood and on on black masculinity the the attempt to feminize black manhood it's constantly praised by blacks because we've been trained well that is artistic expression it, it absolutely is artistic expression except for when you sit up and say gentlemen take note on how you in so in other words he has now become the representation of black manhood this isn't the first time he's been used for that he's been used for that consistently since he came out he's been used consistently as the measure of manhood and as an image of manhood when he is not the representation of black manhood he's not the representation of black masculinity he's not the only one even and see he is openly gay so there's a difference now that this would not even have drawn my attention if the the caption on that picture said now queens this is how you show up at the met gala would have had no problem with that because I would have taken that as him being a representation of gay men who are on the flaming side. Because you got gay men that you would never know were gay. Then you got outwardly hot flaming gay, highly effeminate men who are gay. And when you say that queen thing, normally that's what you're talking about, unless you're, again, tra talking about transgender. There's so many different elements of this, but I'm talking specifically about this. But the fact that you refer to a person who is presenting every little piece of femininity they can muster up in this presentation, and that's who you choose to, to tell men, this is how you do it. No, that's not how you do it. That isn't the representation of manhood. That is not what a man does. And here's the reason why. Why you can get women to celebrate that, why you can get women to uh, co-sign it even, you'll never get women to follow, to trust, to defend. They're cool to hang out with. They're fun to be around give them the freedom to be expressive and do what they want but you can't lead me i can't trust you to protect me well then that's a problem when we are using this image as the standard and there's this thing that's going on where we are literally and it's been going on forever the feminization of the black male image and whenever you hear me say the feminization of the black male image i'm not talking about effeminate uh behavior uh amongst gay men predominantly i'm talking about when a heterosexual man is put in a position that feminizes him but in this instance because the reference to gentlemen refers to men and then it is implied that hey this is how you should be doing it no that's not how a man is supposed to be doing it. That's how a gay person who is attention whoring does it. Now, again, be as expressive as you want to in doing your thing. But when, what I can tell you is if you get a black man and he expresses his masculinity in a way that is obviously masculine, or maybe even ex, ex, uh, exaggeratedly gas uh, uh, masculine, he's a thug. But when a black man expresses himself in a way that's overtly feminine, he's the standard. And while it seems uh, harmless, that's because we don't understand how things work. That's another thing that I've constantly told you. That's one of the things when they say... Uh, what they have to say at my memorial. They would talk about how much I was concerned with the fact that blacks did not understand how things work. 
Because when you understand how things work, you understand the influence of the media. You understand the influence of open image. Uh, you understand the influence of celebrity. Celebrity is influential. Music is influential. He is a celebrity musician. He is a performer who gets to set a standard of what's to be aspired to. And there is a crossing of lines and the blurring of lines, uh, i.e. his video in prison with the pink on and all the naked guys and all of that. That's a crossing of a real true black experience with a feminine um, lean to it that again blurs the lines. And psychologically, you consistently feed the mind that this is what it is. Plus, you make it celebrated. When you got a people who haven't been celebrated, specifically a male population, who's the most marginalized population in this country, while black women are the most at, at risk for physical harm, black men are the most marginalized. We're the most underpaid in cross-representation to our non-black male counterparts. We are the most unemployed. Uh, we are the most politically impotent. Uh, and I'm going down the line. We are targeted the most for criminalization and incarceration. Uh, we make up 6% of the population uh, in this country, and yet we make up 40% of the prison population. We are the majority. There's a reason for that. We are not more criminal minded. We are just simply put in situations that ensure we are caught in those things. And again, this is a systematic thing that's being pushed in because we don't understand how things work. We tend to co-sign it, man. Leave those people alone. Let people live. Let me explain something to you. Humans are mammals. Mammals, by definition, are social creatures. If you look and you observe all mammals, they operate in a social environment. They operate under a social code. Whether you're talking lions, whether you're talking seals, whether you're talking elephants, they all operate in a social environment where they work together and there's a code of behavior that they're held to. And in many species, the violation of that code is punishable by death because the adherence to that code is the survival of the species. Yet we're in a situation where the code has been subverted by subconscious uh, stimuli that is suggestive that what is natural is not natural and what is unnatural is and that we should aspire to it but when you take a marginalized group of people and you say well this will get you celebrated you tend to sit up and say leave that alone then you talk about the situation in which you have black heterosexual males and they are being feminized you how many of hollywood's leading men have been put in roles where they've had to wear dresses it's entertainment but how many and then the counter argument for blacks is always but they and not understanding. See, the one thing that being in science and having to con conduct scientific research is I don't get the chance to be subjective. I have to be objective and I have to have things that I can observe, things I can measure, things that I can do that allows me to predict behavior because I'm in behavioral science. So I need to be able to understand that that's why I do what I do. So, so what happens is the average person, just let it go. I'm looking at what's actually going to happen if we follow a certain course. And what I'm looking at is you consistently put people in a situation. And one of the things that uh, blacks love to do is they. So they want to say, well, white men wear dresses on there. White men do this. Let me explain something to you. Whites make up the majority of the population in this country. And anytime that begins to get threatened, they literally reclassify what's white. There was a time Italians weren't white. There was a time Jews weren't white. 
uh, that was a time Latinos. Now you get to classify it as a Latino. You can classify yourself as Hispanic uh, of Caucasian origin. You can literally say I'm white, but Hispanic. Why? Because, and you know that there are certain people that will do that solely for the purpose of being classified as white. But what they're doing is they're trying to give up their numbers. And while that's artificially uh, exaggerated, it still gives the impression of the majority population. The truth of the matter is they're not procreating at a rate that will allow them to sustain their majority population indefinitely. That's a concern for them. And so they have been on a constant push for over 50 something years to control the population. One of the ways that they do, uh, decided to do this was the pushing of homosexuality in certain communities. And you say, well, whites are homosexual. There are more white homosexuals than males. Yes, there are far more white people than black people. So let me explain to you why that's important so that we can move on. OK, I'm going to do an exaggerated uh, example so you can get the math real quick and we don't have to go through this for long. If you got 100 black men and you've got 100,000 white men and 1,000 white men are gay and 50 black men are gay, who's going to be more impacted? What race is going to be more impacted by the homosexual makeup of their male population? Blacks. Because we don't have the numbers to have that many people. So, in, and I exaggerated the numbers, but half of our men, one-tenth of theirs, no, one percent of theirs are homosexuals, 1,000 out of 100,000. One percent of theirs. Verse, and they're far more gays than the 50 we have. But the 50 percent is cataclysmic. But see, it's not just the agenda to feminize the black male population. Because in the feminization of the black male population, you lose your strength. You lose your stance. You lose your ability to intimidate when necessary those who oppose you and your people. You become unfeared. And the one thing that the black man needs to be is feared. Not feared in the sense that he's going to rob you. Not feared in the sense that he's finna break in you. But feared that if you mess with black people, you're going to have to deal with the black man. Well, the first thing that do is we're going to feminize the in it, in, image. So when you become feminized and then people start aspiring to this more softer version of masculinity, and then you are penalized for fighting to stay in your true masculinity. And then they subtly shifted even more by coming up with a term toxic masculinity. And now you have black people, even black men defending the term without understanding. And yes, it's applied again to all races, but it is eminently and almost infinitely more impactful in the way that it's used in the black community. And so let me explain something to you. By the very definition of true masculinity, there is nothing toxic about it. Behavior by someone who happens to be a man does not mean that they are exhibiting toxic masculinity. What they are doing is operating outside of their masculinity. True masculinity protects. True masculinity provides. True masculinity leads. True masculinity takes responsibility and accountability. It's a natural art of watch any species. When the uh, male species is operating, they're operating in provision, protection, uh, leadership, covering, and all of these things. It's it doesn't matter. Just because we have a higher intellectual order doesn't change the natural order of species. So in essence, me being in my masculinity will never produce me harming someone for no reason. It will never produce me mishandling, mistreating, not loving the people that I'm responsible for. That's not masculinity. That's toxic behavior, but it's not masculinity. Masculinity in its very nature protects it is a positive force, absolutely necessary. Just because a man does it doesn't mean it's masculine. And so we have to be careful how it's done because what happens now is because we haven't checked it now because we've got toxic masculinity, which is uh, a misnomer, but we've got toxic masculinity. And guess what happens? Anytime a man, a black man does something we don't like, 
that they're exhibiting toxic masculinity. Anytime a black man raises his voice, it's toxic. Anytime a black man says, you do that, I will fuck you up. He's toxic. No, he's telling you you're crossing the line. He's telling you he's ready to die to defend something. He's telling you that he was put here to do a certain thing and he's willing to die to do it. And you think it's something toxic about that. No, he's doing what he's supposed to do. But what's happening is we're softening the standard. We're softening what's expected. We're softening what's demanded. And so what happens is when you see a true man standing in his thing and he's saying, look, I'll die for this something wrong with it but I agree with Dr. King a man that does not have something for which he is willing to die is not fit to live the thing is getting young black males to find the true nature of their existing in the in the true meaning of their purpose so they die for the right thing it's not about dying I've been willing to die for a long time. I, I, I grew up in the hood. I've been willing to die for a long time. I done went through some journeys and been through some things that I will not talk about. And the things I was willing to die for then, I thank God that I didn't die for because now I have things of value that if I die for, I leave a legacy. I die with honor. And that's the thing that that, 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 that we have really truly got to come to is this understanding of what's being done. We've got to stop being so acceptable of things solely because we don't want to offend other people. People will use your unwillingness to offend them to consume and take all of the space in the air around you because they know you won't complain. They know you won't push back. They know you won't call them on that stuff because you don't want to make them uncomfortable. You don't want, we spend so much time checking one another, trying to make each other act the way they think we should act so they aren't uncomfortable. I'm not about bothering nobody that doesn't bother me, but I am not going to put myself in a situation where I'm miserable to make someone else feel better. I am simply not going to do that. So then what am I, I'm going to be the best version of me. I'm going to love on me. I'm going to love on my kids. I'm going to love on my family. I'm going to do everything in my power to be a strong black man that loves on black women. Um, at some point in time, I hopefully will end up married again. Um, uh, at this time, that's not something that I'm even pursuing, but uh, it's definitely on my radar. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be kind and I'm going to challenge my young brothers. I'm going to challenge my older brothers to take the same route, to love on our women, to be protectors of our women, to, uh, to reassume what we've abdicated. We abdicated roles in our homes because it became uncomfortable, because uh, it, it, it became acceptable not to be there. It became a thing and we accepted it. We didn't fight to stand. We didn't fight to stay. Uh, we let our egos get the best of us. I spent the last probably 20 years of my life training my ego not to be offended. Even when I'm wronged, I won't let my e I, 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 it doesn't mean that I'm not observing behavior and acting accordingly, but what it does mean is I'm not acting out of emotion and I'm not acting out of a bruised ego. I'm going to do what's best. And so that's what I am encouraging black men to do. And my thing is, again, I'm not here to tell anybody who they are. Male, female, gay or straight, transgendered or anything else. I'm not here to tell you who to be. It's not my job. I'm here to give my opinion on what certain behavior does on a social level based off of my expertise. I'm here to talk about what we can expect by certain behaviors. I'm here to talk about what a certain number of people behaving a certain way will produce in our communities. Now, it's up to us to take it and gain an understanding of it and do something with it. 
I'm not going to tell you what to be. And I'm going to love you as a black person, no matter who you are. But I'm going to speak my truth. I'm going to stand on my square. I'm not going to be intimidated to move off of it. I'm not going to be shamed to move off of it. I'm going to stand my ground and I'm going to love hard my black people of all backgrounds, of all identities and everything else. And But I'm going to tell my truth because my truth has value and I'm going to stand strong in that. And when I see a systematic attack on masculinity, especially black masculinity, I have to call it out and I've called it out for years. I've come under con uh, contact, I mean attack behind it because nobody wants to be called. My whole thing is we need black men to be strong, bold, forceful, and if necessary, willing to die to protect that which is valuable within our community. Now, we need to develop an understanding of what's value, valuable because we've lost that. We need to have an understanding of what we are responsible for. That's why I created the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative. Why? Because we need to have a clear understanding of what a black man is. See, everybody's defining who they are based on their own identity. So no true standard of manhood is being supported and elevated right now. Everybody is in this antinomianistic state of self-servitude and celebration, and nobody is looking at the bigger picture, but everybody else outside of our community, while they have all these different identities, know how to rally to the racial enclave and circle the wagons. The Asians do it, the Latinos do it, the Jews do it, uh, white Caucasians the, in whatever backgrounds they come from, they do it. And yet here we are lost in ourselves. That's that man business. No, not when ultimately it's gonna affect me. It's not that man's business because his failure to do what he's doing means that that boy is gonna be out there trying to hook up with my daughter. So no, it's not just his business. We need to understand that we are sitting around and we're interconnected and we're interconnected in a way that if we're not careful, we're going to produce a race of people that are going to, I mean, a generation of our people who are going to literally implode upon one another. And we're watching it happen. And there's nobody out there standing boldly and saying, as a black man, not on my watch. Oh, but I'm going to be one of those people and I stand with some brothers who are going to do the same thing. But what we need is an, is to call out that. Again, he shows up like that to the Met Gala, no problem. But when it's specifically pointed out and someone like Huffington Post sits up and puts up, gentlemen, take note on how you should enter the Met. No, gentlemen don't enter the Met Gala like that. I don't, you know, whatever male fashion is going on now, but you know, whether it's a tuxedo, whether it's a suit, whether it's some other form of fashion, a garb or whatever, but it should be a, an expression of masculinity. It should be an expression of something that you can look at and recognize. And there's a distinction and you know it. You can sit up and pretend that there's this blur, 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 blurred line that a man in a dress doesn't offend you. You can sit up and pretend that a man in a skirt doesn't offend you. And you can pretend that all this other stuff it isn't the truth of the matter is the soul knows the subconscious knows when you see something you're looking at it going like hey they can do that they can do their thing all day long but you're not really really respecting it as a man and they're not doing it in there you're not seeing anyone no matter what they identify showing up in a space where manhood is necessary in a in in, a, in any way that's non-representative of manhood now they'll be gay as hell over there. They'll be feminist, but when it's time to show up, you won't see it. Because it's clearly understood by those who have studied this societal construct that it's cool to be that. 
and it'll get you laughs, it'll get you applause, it'll get you celebrated, it'll even make you rich. But it won't get you respect, not as a man. And there's a reason why. It's not hatred. You know, they love throwing that word phobia out there and hater. And, no, it's not hate. I, I love all my black people. I love humanity in general, but I take care of home first. I I, 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 I have an, a, a, a built-in animosity against anybody who's hostile towards me and what I love. But other than that, I want everybody to prosper. Just not at my expense. Not at the expense of the people I love. But I'm not going to sit around and pretend that I don't see what's going on and act like everything is okay to make you feel good. That isn't love anyway. One of the biggest problems we have right now is that we aren't telling people we love the truth. And we can do that without being mean. We don't have to be hostile. We don't have to be ugly. But we need to be direct and we need to be honest. We don't need to beat around the bush. We need to be very honest with people. Look, what you're doing is destroying your life. What you're doing right now is foul. What you're doing right now, the people in your life deserve better. What you're doing right now, you deserve better. You owe yourself more than what you do. We need to be honest. That's sometimes I've had to sit down and be honest with myself. And fortunately, I got people in my circle that are willing to be honest with me. Matter of fact, I don't have any yes men. We love to surround ourselves around people who will co sign our bullshit. And that's the problem. We love to be around people who are going to tell us, man, that's, 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 that's horrible. I can't believe it. Man, you, you can do that if you want to. And here's another problem. You got to be real careful. Uh, there are some people that call themselves your friend that will literally cheer you on and, 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 and encourage you to press the accelerator when you're headed for that wall as a crash dummy. They won't pull your coattail. They won't say, you probably may want to rethink that. They'll cheer you on. Go on, girl. Go on, do it. Hey, dog, man, screw that. Do this, dog. All that, man. And the whole time, it's their misery that's wanting to see you miserable, too. And they realize that you can't see the blessing in your life. Because you're blinded by something in front of you and they just compile, compile it and make it worse and ex exacerbate it. And the next thing you know, you're looking up and you're going, what the hell happened? And they're going, dog, why you do that? And you've got to be careful. You want somebody that's going to pull you aside and say, hey, look, I love you. But what you're doing right now, no, that's not a good move. Have you really thought about it? You gonna be honest with me and tell me what's really going on? So somebody's gonna have a real conversation with you, and that's what I've tried to do with my people uh, for for years: is have a real honest conversation about where we're at as a people. Some people don't like some of the things I say. I get it. Nobody wants to be held accountable. Nobody wants to feel this little comfort zone they've created for themselves. And we got this unbelievable gift of escapism because that's how we've had to live for so long because we couldn't have what we really wanted because they wouldn't let us. So we built this escapism, this way of living life and getting away from the truth and pretending. And now we have into it and we don't know how to get out of it. And so we just keep going on in this pretend world that everything's grand, everything is good, and they're study sucking the life out of us. There's a reason why the wealth gap is consistently widening, and we're not able to stop it. On the outside, it looks like, hey, man, black people making ground, but why is the wealth gap widening? Because, see, wealth is power. They'll, they'll tell you all day long your vote is power. And yet the wealthy elite, which represents 2 to 3% of the population control everything. They literally manipulate and control policy because they manipulate and control who actually gets in the office, who gets what uh, backing, who gets all of this stuff on a level. 
One thing that I would uh, suggest you read is The Grand Chess Board by Brzezinski Brzezinski. If you don't know who that is, that says a lot. But you need to read The Grand Chess Board to understand just how the mind works in creating the world that you live in that you see at face value when there's so much more going on underneath the surface. You need to start to learn and understand social science. You need to understand how the subconscious is programmed by what it is engaged in. The more I feed your mind something, the more your mind will accept it. I don't care how you feel. There's a desensitization process. There is an inculcation process. There's a process of conditioning in which you will go from saying, that was a point in time that you can't tell me. Look, just think about the things that are said on television right now. If you're old enough to remember, be a child in the 70s, tell me how much of the television content would have flew back then. Tell me how much of the sexual content on television would have flew in the 70s. So then how did we get here? Did all the people who uh, uh, who were against it die off? No. What happened? They slowly conditioned you to accept it. They put small amounts of it in front of you, and it, it made you uncomfortable, and you spoke out, and that was backlash, but throw a little more out there. Over time, what you were pushing against now just eases up, and slowly you're backed into a corner and then you eventually just turn around and go, this is what it is. And you go and now you're into it and you're watching it and you're not even offended by it anymore. And they use this over and over again. Do you realize that Adolf Hitler used the system of propaganda created in the U.S. to wage his propaganda campaign against the Jews in Germany? This isn't new. And this country is a beast at it. And then the media now has gone global. So the same games are being played worldwide. You got close to 14,000 media outlets with six primary owners. Let me just let that set there. The information that sets the tone, that sets the standard, that writes the narrative is controlled by six people. You know you've been had when you got the vast majority of the population, regardless of race, talking about we need to save our democracy. Every time I hear that, I just sit up and I just shake my head. I don't even get into the conversations anymore. We don't have a democracy. We never did. This is a republic. So that you understand, a democracy would be a place where everybody got to make every decision. Every, every decision that governed the movement of the body of people in that, in that organization, in that nation, in that city, that group would get to vote on it in whole. When you vote in people to vote as your representation, it's called a republic. And once they're in, they're not obligated to seek your approval on how they vote. And the way that the entire thing is set up, you really truly need to start studying. You need to study politics. You need to study military science. You need to study um, uh, economic science. You need to study uh, political, geopolitical uh, science, agricultural science, all the things that are a big part of our survival on a global level. And, and, and you'll begin to understand just how out of it we are and how much of what we believe is being controlled by those who don't have our interest at heart. Again, uh, I love my people regardless of what they identify as regardless of their background and upbringing uh, regardless of their mistakes and situations uh, but I'm going to speak the truth and I'm going to call a spade a spade there's a difference between artistic freedom and the use of artistic freedom to write a narrative 
which is now no longer freedom because over time the narrative supersedes the freedoms of others. And if you don't understand that, you don't understand propaganda and that's the problem. We have work to do. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here, but I just had to drop in on that because I just thought it was real crazy. And if you notice, I've written a whole lot of articles. I put it in books. Uh, this identity crisis, this feminization of the black male image, this introduction of toxicity, the black on black crime myth, so many other things that are being pushed as narratives that put us in situations that don't benefit us. And we literally celebrate it. Uh, there's a way of saying, man, do you, that's your thing without, uh, being compliant or complacent with the things that push that as the standard. Do your thing, but that's not the standard. That's not manhood. Well, a man can be any, no, a man can't be anything. That's the lie. No, there are certain things that define a man. Anybody can be a male, but what defines manhood is specific. There's something that you graduate into from the beginning of your childhood through puberty, through adolescence and through young adulthood and manhood that you need to be able to move in through and graduate into. And when you don't even have a clue of what it is, how can you become it? And yet they keep pushing the opposite. Why? Because if we can keep black men off their game, we can keep mishandling black people no matter how affluent we make black women. And here's the thing. The more successful we allow black women to become, the less tolerant of black men they become. It's a beautiful thing. Except for you if you're black. Look on that note. Look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your uh, day, uh, know that I love you. I love my people and I'll continue to fight and stand for my people on that note. I'm out of here. You guys have a great day. Hello everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.